Hello and welcome back. In today's episode, we're working with a chili that is not exactly my favorite. I did an episode on my Checking Out Chilies with Chili Chump series last year, where I tried this chili out. I said I didn't really like it. It has very floral overtones, but I did mention that maybe as a dry spice, it'd be quite nice. The pepper I'm talking about is the ahi lemon drop. And today we're gonna to make not only a dry spice, but we're also gonna be doing a fermented hot sauce. I started this episode back in September of 2019 when I still had hair and today we're going to be processing those fermented peppers and we're also going to have a look at the dried peppers that I started out. For these remaining 400 grams of lemon drops, I'm going to be vacuum seal fermenting them. And uh, for 400 grams, we're gonna need eight grams of salt because we're doing a 2% salt concentration. I'm just gonna chop them up quite coarsely and uh, get them ready to be fermented inside the bag. Smells so good. They're not exactly my favorite pepper, but they have something very unique, very interesting uh, to them. And the, the smells, the flavors, they're, they're quite intense. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this works out in a fermentation. This is my vacuum sealer. I'm really getting on well with it. I've made a good purchase here. This thing just does a great job and uh, it does both dry and moist. So if we are going to be making a mash, which I have done with another sauce recently, then you can just use the, the moist setting over here and it allows you to vacuum seal moist things. So this one here, not so moist, but I'm still gonna leave it on the moist setting. So let's create a bag. How much are we going to need? I'd say that's more than enough. The real benefit of this system is the fact that you're removing all the oxygen, you're leaving behind nothing there, which is just <laughs> perfect for lactobacillus. Lactobacillus needs an anaerobic environment, which means no oxygen. All the nasties and the pathogens, the things you don't want, they actually need oxygen to survive. So by removing the oxygen, you're creating an environment that is perfect for the lactobacillus. And there we go. This thing does such a great job. It's not expensive and yeah, I couldn't be happier. I, I was looking at some of the more expensive models, but it just didn't make sense spending, you know, a few hundred pounds on something that, uh, you know, I wasn't too sure about in the first place, but this thing, it's just doing such a great job. Let's have a look at the dried peppers first. So these here are my dried ahi lemon drops. It took about, about five days to get this dry and this is how I store it. I have actually used a few of these so I know what it tastes like. I'll taste it a little bit later in this video as well so I'll give you my thoughts on what this tastes like compared to what I thought of the fresh peppers. The one thing to note here is look at that color. It's maintained that yellow beautifully. 
The ahi lemon drop is a gorgeous bright yellow pepper when it's on the plant. When I fermented it, and we'll have a look at that in just a second, it has lost a bit of that color. It's a little bit duller. This ground up with a little bit of salt and pepper, spread that on a pork chop. It's just stunning. There are our fermented ahi lemon drops. Now you can see there's a little bit of CO2 still in there. I get a lot of questions from people concerned that these bags will explode when this did blow up quite a bit. Snip a corner, let the air out as gently as you can. Don't let any air back in and then just quickly seal it up again. Nice and easy. Don't vacuum seal it again. Just seal it. Like I said before, you can see the color here is quite a bit duller than what we had with these dried ones. They were the same pepper, and of course this is going to happen. It's just the nature of what happens during fermentation. So don't worry about it too much. We're going to prepare the other ingredients that I'm going to add to our fermented hot sauce. I'm only going to add two. The first one is about a tablespoon of cardamom pods. I think it'll complement nicely the uh, ahi lemon drop. And then we have one and a half tablespoons of coriander seeds. The, the smell of cardamom cooking like this is just wow. You don't have to do this too long. Actually, you don't want to do it too long. You don't want to burn in the ingredients. But yeah, just a little bit, just until you start releasing some of those fragrances. And then we're going to grind that up. Keep it moving so it doesn't burn on the bottom. You'll hear the coriander start to crack a little bit. And that's pretty much when I'm done with this. I don't want to do it too much further than that. The smells in this place are amazing. Really need to invent some smell of vision, I think. YouTube, get on that. Remove the husks of the cardamom pods so we can see there. I'm just going to get rid of those. It doesn't matter if you leave behind a little bit of it, it will all grind up just fine into the sauce anyway. But uh, try and get the majority out. We're going to be using my Ninja Blender today, so just this guy over here, let's get those in there. Normally there's a much stronger smell from my fermentations. I don't know if it's been offset a little bit by the floral sort of flavors that come from the ahi lemon drop, but yeah, it smells fresh, smells clean. Let me get about two tablespoons of white wine vinegar in there. I do a lot of experimenting. I try and figure out new recipes and you know for every success you see on my channel there's about 20 failures. So you know I'm going to share with you a little bit of my experimenting and I'm going to do it with this sauce here. So often when you buy hot sauces you'll see that the main ingredient or the first ingredient that's listed is water and there's a couple of reasons that happens. Uh, I think a lot of the time it's because it just makes the batch size bigger so you make more money selling that hot sauce. I think it detracts from the flavor a lot of the time. Other times it may be because you want to make it a bit more liquid. This is obviously quite a solid uh, thick sauce and I don't want it that thick. I want it to be pourable and instead of adding vinegar add water. So if I add the amount of vinegar that would be needed to water this down enough, it would make it too vinegary. It's not the, it's not the flavor profile I'm going for. So I'm going to add water to this to thin it down. When I do that, there's a bit of a problem. When you are making a fermented sauce, you're aiming to get your pH levels low, right? Ideally below 4.0. Adding vinegar is great because vinegar is a low pH substance anyway, so you're not going to be increasing the pH of your sauce. If anything, you're going to be decreasing it. Adding water, however, you are diluting the pH. You're diluting the acidity of your sauce. And effectively, you could be raising that pH up to somewhat dangerous levels. Water, most tap water is around about 7.0. It's neutral on the pH. Some is even alkali, which means it is above seven and that's not good that's not good at all it means that your shelf life of your sauce is not going to be great however i have a bit of a workaround and that is citric acid 
Citric acid is, well, it comes from citrus, but it doesn't add that citrus flavor. Sometimes maybe you want a citrus flavor to be added to your sauce, but a lot of the time, you just want to avoid adding any new flavors and you know overwhelming maybe some of the subtle flavors that you've already added like i've added the cardamom and i've added the coriander seeds and obviously we have the flavors of the peppers themselves adding lemon sort of flavors in there would be quite dominant in a sauce like this as would adding vinegar and you would ruin the sauce a little bit so i'm going to be adding a touch of citric acid to keep that ph level low because citric acid is an acid so it will decrease that pH and it'll offset what I'm going to be doing when I add water to this. Another thing I'm going to do is add a touch of xanthan gum. I know it sounds counterintuitive if I'm thinning this out then adding xanthan gum to thicken it up again. It's not about really thickening it up it's about emulsifying it making sure that everything stays together. Adding water to something like this you're likely to get separation as you would if you're adding vinegar as well. So just a touch of xanthan gum just to keep this emulsified, uh, keep it together for longer. It will still separate, that's just the nature of these things, but at least it will hold together a lot longer. You can just give it a quick shake before you use it and that'll solve it. So let's add some water to this, a little bit of xanthan gum and some citric acid. This here is about 400 milliliters. I'm going to be adding in about 200 milliliters of water to thin this out to start with, and that's 200 milliliters. Before I add the citric acid, let's see the effect that this will have on the acidity of the sauce. So I'm going to blend this up just with the water and we'll see what the acidity is, and then we'll add the citric acid and see what effect that has. I probably should have tested the sauce before I added the water for a real test, but uh, yeah, I forgot. I think I'm still going to need some more water in there because uh, that's still quite thick. But let's see what effect that has uh, before we start adding the water again. This was calibrated this morning, so I know that it is good. And let's just test that out. So the acidity is still sitting pretty decent, actually, with the amount of water that we added. So 3.9 which is still very, very safe. So the fermentation must have been pretty decent. It must have been probably around about 3.3, 3.4. That's typically where lactobacillus will stop fermenting anyway. And with the length of time that this has been fermenting with the amount of sugars that would be inside here, then that kind of makes sense. So let me rinse this off. And let's add another 200 milliliters of water. So that'll bring it up to 400 milliliters, which is the equal amount source to water. Definitely about, about the liquidity that I'm looking for. Let's test that out. I'm going to need a little bit more than that. Let's see what that's done to the acidity here. So, So that there sitting at 3.9 still, which is actually pretty impressive. I thought it would increase it quite a bit more than that. So I'm gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of citric acid to the mix and we'll see what effect that has on the acidity. So a quarter teaspoon, let's see how much effect this actually has. So let's drop that by 0.1. So if I'd used one or two teaspoons, then you'd see quite a big drop compared to that. But there we go, it's 0.1 that has gone down. So it really does have an effect. And if you find that your fermentation after you've put your extra ingredients in is a bit high on the pH, then you can do that to bring it back down again. So it's time for me to actually taste this and uh, see if it needs any other ingredients before we finish this off. I have a feeling we might need some more salt because with the vacuum fermentation you don't actually use as much salt as you normally would. So I'm guessing this is going to need a little bit more salt. But let me try it out. 
yeah, that needs that needs salt. I'm going to be adding half a teaspoon of salt into this. I think that will make all the difference here. And the last thing we're going to do is add a touch of xanthan gum. Just some of this over here. Make sure it's food grade if you are going to use xanthan gum. So it's time to taste the final product and see what I think and uh, see if there's any other ingredients I'd add in a future batch that I make. And that is looking pretty good. I prefer the color was a little bit more yellow <laughs> rather than this uh, mustard color. But to be honest, I prefer red sauces anyway, but let's see what it tastes like. So it hasn't thickened it up with the amount of xanthan gum I added, but like I said, hopefully it does help to emulsify it. And uh, there we go. It's a clean spoon, by the way, before anyone comments down below. Salt, definitely better with the salt. Still quite a bit of heat in there, even though I watered this down by half, really. Still a good amount of heat. The, um, the cardamom, it really comes through. Wow. It still burns. That's, well, something to keep in mind in the future. If you are making sauces, you do want to water it down a little bit. It doesn't reduce the heat as much as you might think. There's a good amount of heat in there. Not bad. And um, flavors are good. I think, what would I add? A bit of Chinese five spice, maybe. It, it really needs to be pumped up a little bit of the floral notes. Like I said, the the ahi lemon drop is quite a floral pepper anyway, so you want to work with that, so complement it rather than trying to work against it by adding things like maybe um, cumin and stuff like that. Although cumin might be all right here, similar to my uh, one punch knockout that I made with the hind and yellow lanterns. Um, that that actually that recipe might work quite well with the ahi lemon drop. It just obviously wouldn't be as hot. But that that's rather good. That's rather good. I think I think I might want a bit of sweetness in there as well. So maybe a bit of uh, sweetener. If I was going to add normal sugar, then of course you want to heat this up to around about sixty or seventy degrees Celsius, so that you kill the fermentation dead, or else you're probably going to end up starting the fermentation again. Lactobacillus will want to eat the sugars. You could use sweeteners, so artificial sweeteners, which lactobacillus will not eat, and then you don't need to heat it up. But it's really up to you. I think that's the only ingredient I might uh, want to add in the future and also probably a little bit more coriander. The uh, cardamom is overwhelming the coriander tastes and I really love the, the taste of coriander. So that's probably something I'll do as well. Maybe another tablespoon of coriander seeds and uh, a little bit of sugar. But that's not bad. Anyway, there's one last thing to do and that is I told you I was going to try one of the dry ahi lemon drops. And let you know what I think. Uh, this would be quite interesting, actually. So there it is. It's, oh, the smell. It really is a fragrance. It's a nice smelling pepper. Uh, but that's the problem. It's very fragrant, very floral, and that's not my type of pepper. I, I prefer the, uh, I don't know, the capsicum chinens. A lot of them uh, aren't very floral. It just killer heat. On the less spicy side, maybe things like cayenne, or um, the peri peri, of course. I prefer that sort of flavors and uh, smells. But let's try one of these. <laughs> oh, I forget how hot that is. It's got a bit of spice to it. Um, especially when you eat it like that. Um, still very, very floral, but I think it works well with meals, with something else on its own. It's not, uh, sorry, just I really don't like that flavor. Um, on its own, not not so great. But I know that a lot of people out there that absolutely love it and it's their favorite pepper, but for me, not so much. I'm very interested to see what the cross between this and my peri peri is going to be like. Birdie mouth. Um, but the cross between this and my peri peri, really excited to see what that comes out like. Hopefully it brings in some of the characteristics I love about the Peri Peri and uh, tones down some of the things I don't like about the Lemon Drop. <clears throat> anyway, that's it. I think I'm going to go and have something to drink because uh, a bit of 
bit of heat in the mouth. Anytime you, <clears throat> anytime you eat uh, whole peppers, raw peppers, or fresh peppers, dry peppers, whatever, um, yeah, that's <clears throat> a little uncomfortable. Thankfully, it wasn't one of my super hots. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hope that you learned a few things, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, stay safe and stay spicy.